Andrew, go for it. <clears throat> We've talked uh, a lot about the meshing process with you guys, all the different parts coming together. And um, with three games in three days against three different types of teams last week, how much do you think you guys push that forward by, by building that meshing that you need to become sort of a fully in sync group? I definitely think the Bahamas helped. I mean, not just on the court, but also off the court. We, had, we were there three days early. We did some stuff with some little kids. We went to the water park. We just hung out as a team and with our coaching staff. And it's kind of having to prepare for three really good teams in three days with quick turnarounds has really helped us for the season. From how much does the off the court stuff help the on court stuff when you're when you're trying to get you? Because you guys have a lot of different styles of play. Right. But does being strong off the court and, and meshing off the court kind of help you sort of uh, recognize guys' games a little bit better when you're on the floor? Does it kind of make that stuff go a little bit smoother? Uh, definitely. I mean, it's kind of just getting to know everybody and building chemistry off the court, I think, helps on the court. I mean, you always play better with your friends, and I would say that, in general, um, everybody on this team, we're all good friends. We all hang out. I mean, we all text each other. We're all active in the group chat. We all know a lot about each other, and I feel like the Bahamas would really help with that. Harrison, I, I meant to ask you the other day, do you personally think the Nova game, did you get caught up maybe too much into the physicality of it, like trying to give it back a little bit? Uh, I don't know if I would say that. I, I don't know. I mean, the last the last call that we got, that I got the little charge call, I feel like right. it's going both ways. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't get the call. And I also had a technical foul that I think I could have been smarter and used that foul elsewhere. elsewhere. But, I mean, it was a physical game, and we just matched their physicality. And I guess I ask that just, you know, knowing obviously you expect a – a physical battle with Tennessee too and like how do you from what you've seen of them so far how do you think that matches up to, to how Villanova was and, and what you all can expect and what you need to be ready for? I mean we haven't finished the complete scout we're finishing that today in practice but we know it's gonna be a physical game we know they have eight nine really good players deep team we know we have to be physical on defense physical on offense and be ready to go because they're coming they're trying to beat us they're coming off two losses I think in Maui against two good teams but still two losses so you know they're gonna be motivated to be ready to go. Before you guys went to the Bahamas, hadn't played tough competition yet, so you don't really know like how good you are. So coming out of that, finish against Arkansas, did you feel like that gave you guys some belief that you can carry over? I mean, I think we all already have belief. It's just showing everybody else. We played FAU in a scrimmage, and so we kind of knew what we could do against better competition. It was a secret scrimmage. But for us, just kind of showing the world what we're able to do and showing the world how our team is. I like we have a lot of really good pieces. Everyone does something a little bit different, but everybody brings really something really good to the table. Okay, so what's your comfort level offensively with the rest of the guys right now? I mean, as high as it's ever been. <laughs> um, they have confidence in me. I have confidence in them. I like the way we're playing, sharing the ball. Everyone knows their spots. So I feel like the roles are very – everyone's getting their role kind of – I mean, we're still defining roles because we're still at the beginning of the season, a brand new team, but I think everybody's kind of fitting into their role and kind of figuring out where they need to be on the court. Is there, like, one thing that gets you – into a game, like, you know, is it handling the ball early? Is it getting a post touch? Is there something early on in the game that gets you into that flow? For me, it's just an energy play, like a steal or a charge or, I don't know, there's someone screaming or, like, I don't know, Cormac or <laughs> somebody just screaming gets me going. Speaking of Cormac, obviously wasn't able to play in the Arkansas game. was described as almost another coach on the bench. How do you see that? I mean, yeah, he's, what, I think he's 25. 25 now? Yeah, he's been, he, was playing, he was playing college basketball when I was, like, in high school. So, you know, for him, I mean, when he says something, I listen. And, you know, he's trying to get knowledge from him. He's been in the ACC for, like, three or four years now. He was at Stanford before I was. So I know that he sees stuff that I might not see just because I'm younger. So, I mean, on the court, Arkansas game, he was telling me stuff about I had two turnovers, Example, I had two turnovers where I turned my back and I would spin and they would come get it. He told me to stop spinning. I stopped spinning the second half and it started working. Yeah, was that, um, do you remember like on the bench or in a timeout or when did he kind of pull you over? It was in timeout right after the coach started talking. Uh, stopped talking. Uh, we were walking out to the court and before the ref gave us the ball, he like, walked up to me and said it real quick. In terms of your three-point shooting, you know, 48% so far early in the season, is it a matter of just a confidence thing, or, or do you think you're getting different looks <coughs> with the offense this year than what you might have been getting at Stanford? I think it's a combination of both. I'm not having to take as many off-the-dribble shots that I take. Last second uh, shot clock, I mean, we don't really get to the last second shot clock a lot because we play so fast, but in general, I'm not really taking last second threes. I'm more aggressive towards the rim. And then most of the threes I'm taking are uh, catch-and-shoot step in threes, which at Stanford, I'm pretty sure I shot like 40 over my two years on just catch and shoot threes, and those are the shots I'm taking mostly here. Do you, do you feel like the, there's been pressure in a way lifted off of you in terms of having to be that 
playmaker, go-to score, knowing the talent that you kind of have around you that you might have not had at your best? It's definitely helped a lot. I'm not sure if the word is pressure or more just kind of just having the help, knowing that I have a bunch of other players who are threats on the floor, like RJ, like Armando, like Cormac, like Elliott, Jayway, like Muka on the list. And that makes the teams can't double because if they double, we're going to make them pay. So everything is one on one, everything is easier basketball. Uh, Harrison, what's, what stuck out to you uh, from RJ these first six games? I know you obviously <laughs> spent time with him in the offseason, kind of see what he can do, but in these in game situations, what's kind of stuck out about the way he's playing? I mean, he's a bucket. I mean, he gets buckets. I mean, when he, when he shoots the ball, like, he's one of those guys I assume is going in. I mean, I'm supposed to crash the glass every possession, but when he shoots, I tend to just get back on defense that I assume is going in. <laughs> but just really his leadership. Um, he was here for four years. He's been there. He was there two years ago when they made the run. He was there last year when they had the bad year. So he knows the ups, he knows the downs. He knows that there's an ebb and flow to every season. And just kind of hearing from him how it is, how if you have a bad game, it doesn't really matter. You just got to be ready for the next game. How, how would you compare and contrast his? <clears throat> versus Armando's leadership styles? Because they've both been there for those things that you right. said. Uh, Armando's more, RJ's more of our on the court leader. Like he'll, he breaks up the huddles if we're having a bad practice and the coach wants, instead of the coach bringing us together, he might bring us together. Where Armando's more of like the, he kind of makes sure you're all right at all times. Like I'm new to the campus, so he, like if I have anything, I know I can call him. Like if anything goes down or anything happens on campus, Armando's 100% the person we call. Okay. What do you, you think when someone Called, describe your game as an old man's game, like a late 80s, early 90s game. They, they can call my game whatever they want. I'm just trying to do whatever I can. Have you heard that much? I had that since I was in high school. People it's sort of a combination. We, some people were talking about last week who we said, you know, you got an element of late 80s, early 90s NBA and a 2023 game as well. So take us through. What, what, what is that? What is your game? Tell us what you think it is. For me, I think my game is I'm very versatile. I mean, I kind of just take whatever the defense gives me. And I think I showed that a lot this weekend. Um, Villanova game, I shot a lot of threes. Same with the Northern Iowa, because the way they were playing, they are kind of packing it in because we were bigger than them. And, and, and then against Arkansas, my three wasn't falling, and then they were a little bit smaller on the wing, so we decided to post me up a lot. So I kind of showed that, both aspects and both styles of my game, and showed everybody I can do whatever I need to be done on the court. Yeah, the backing in a guy, that's not something you see a lot now especially from wing players. Is that something that you've just always done when you, since you were young? Were you playing maybe in the five when you were a kid, so you had to back people in? It just became part of your game, or how did that come about? Uh, probably because in high school I went to a private school, so we would play against kind of like small <laughs> little, little kids. <laughs> so like, I just post them up all day, and I just post up like four years straight, so that just kind of became part of my game. If I could stay on that real quick, I don't want to hog this, but is there, do you get to a point when you're backing a guy and you kind of feel him on your hip where you know, okay, I can make the move now, I've got him, but you still back in a little bit more and maybe get a more advantageous shot? Uh, for me, uh, it's more, I'm not sure specifically that, it's more the confidence factor of the hard work I know I put in this summer and this off season that I feel like if a team doesn't double me, I feel like I can score consistently. And just knowing that if I'm one-on-one -on -one the post, easy little hook shots like that, or kicking out to the corner, uh, like we did uh, get to Seth in the Arkansas game, whether it's that or scoring myself, I know that I think I'll make the right play. Harrison, Harrison, along those lines, I think a lot of people knew you were versatile. A lot of people knew you were a good player, but I, for some of us, the intensity has been a little bit of a surprise. Like, I mean, you know, you get, you go pretty nuts out there sometimes. <laughs> you know, the three to the no. I mean, like, you know, but like, is has your intensity caught anyone by surprise here? Like, has anyone said like, dang, I didn't know you got that fired up? You know, like. Definitely in practices, at the beginning of the practice, they were a little surprised, but I think that's kind of just become who I am, okay. and they're kind of used to that. But for me, it's just kind of, I feel like I, I want our team has something to prove, and I feel like I have a chip on my shoulder the whole year. I'm kind of I'm locked in, and I got something to prove the entire year. And that's, that is, that's coming out of you? Yes, sir. I mean, it's just, I don't know how to control myself. I'm playing basketball in North Carolina. I'm just so happy. Like, just in the moment. Just building off of that, who would you say is more intense you record about? Oh, man. Oh. And why? As a person, Cormac, 100%, because off the court, he's just an intense guy. Like, no matter what, you talk to him, you see him at all times, just, like, always locked in. Whereas me, I feel like off the court, I'm very different than on the court. Off the court, I'm very, like, kind of goofy and fun-loving. But on the court, like, I don't know. I feel like when the game starts, I don't know. I just, I just lose myself in the game. I don't even know what's going on. I just have to, like, control my emotions sometimes. There's about a three-point shooter between you all. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Harrison. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Harrison. Appreciate it.